We are now at the Yokohama National University in the laboratory of Professor Ken Nakano. Professor Nakano studies self-beating properties of tiny clusters of heart cells, a problem which is interesting for all of us. My heart is beating. Your heart is beating too. Our heart is beating continuously. The heartbeat is evidence that we are alive. It is a mechanical vibration that sustains our life. From a mechanical point of view, I am studying the heartbeat, especially the self-beating of cardiac cells. A culture of living cardiac cells is produced by cooperation partner of Professor Nakano. I have powerful collaborators, Professor Mitsuru Akashi at Osaka University and Professor Koji Yamamoto at Doshi University. They produce self-beating cardiac spheroids from human stem cells. It's amazing. In the first step, human stem cells were grown in a culture liquid. Stem cells form clusters which are visible to the naked eye in the form of small spots, like mold spots. Let us look at them in a microscope. We see both clusters and single stem cells distributed around the clusters. The second step, the stem cells are transformed into heart cells, myocytes. Professor Ken Nakano explains how it works. Uh, with some chemicals at the right time, mm. at the right amount, and then uh, they branch to the cardiomyocytes. Mm. And how long? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. The result of this process are clusters of myocytes. If we consider them attentively, we can see that they beat spontaneously. The clusters, as well as some amount of connective tissue cells, fibroblasts, are then transferred from a flat glass into a glass having many wells, one cluster per one well. Here they spontaneously form cardiac spheroids. They also can be seen with the naked eye as small spots. The clusters are transferred with the help of a pipette together with nutrition fluid. First, to a flat glass. We see it as a dark red spot. With microscope, we can see spontaneous beating of the spheroid, but the most interesting story begins when the spheroid is loaded mechanically. The cardiac spheroid is placed in a microscope on a glass table which can be moved in the vertical direction and is pressed against a soft spring. This is a schematic view of the experimental setup. By moving the base plate in the vertical direction, the normal force acting on the cardiac spheroid can be increased gradually which leads to its specific reaction, which can be seen in the following video. We see a cardiac steroid which initially is beating spontaneously. At some moment, it comes into contact with the spring and the normal force starts to increase gradually. This leads to an increase in frequency and amplitude of beating until some threshold force is achieved after that, the process collapses completely. Coordinated beating of cells of a single cluster already implies that there is a mechanism for synchronizing cells. We can better understand this mechanism if we observe two clusters that first beat independently and then come into contact. This is the loading unit. It has a groove for placing a capillary with the inner diameter of a little bit larger than 0.5 mm. In this groove, a capillary is placed after two cardiac spheroids have been transferred into it. The cardiac spheroids are pressed from both sides with shafts having diameter of 0.5 mm. Now the setup is ready for starting experiment. At first, both clusters beat independently. But then, they are brought into contact. 
After the initial struggle of uncorrelated beats, a correlation is quickly established and the clusters begin to beat in unison, in antiphase. An attentive observation shows that the clusters are strongly deformed only in the vicinity of the conduct. Let us take again a closer look at the beating of one cluster. This graph shows the deflection of the probe due to contraction of the cardiac spheroid. With measured forces and displacements, one can calculate the mechanical work which the cluster performs during one hit. In the right-hand side graph, this work is shown as function of cluster size multiplied with imitation depths, and it is found that the mechanical work is proportional to this combination to the power 1.5. However, the contact mechanics tells us that exactly this combination, diameter times indentation depth to the power 1.5, gives the volume of that part of spheroid which is significantly loaded. This means that the work of beating is proportional to the number of myocytes in the strongly stressed volume. With other words, only those myocytes perform the work which are loaded strongly. Through the simple mechanical test, we found the beautiful scaling law underlying the living materials. The scaling law tells us that the cardiac cells under high stress are hard workers, while the cardiac cells under low stress are actually lazy. This is a story in the tiny cardiac society but it is quite similar to our human society. Don't you think so?